Hi, my name is Rabia. Um, I was actually born in the U.S. I was born in Athens, Georgia. Um, my dad actually came to the U.S. in the 1970s, and he went to school in India. He came from Pakistan, um, and he went to school in Indiana. Uh, my my dad comes from a really wealthy family in Pakistan. Like they're like they own so much land and money and um i didn't know this until i went in 2004 i had no idea what you know what their life was like but um my dad had two brothers one left one went to london one stuck around there um later i learned why everyone just wanted to get out of there there was just so much corruption in his family they were very like greedy um, family would kill each other for land and money. It's just really like a very like a warlord type of situation. It's crazy. Um, but my dad came here and I think he just left. Like he got up and he left. Like he told his parents and he's like, I'm going to America. And I think to make amends with his parents, and this is my understanding of the story, is he went back and agreed to marry like someone. And so he married my mom. <laughs> Um, and then they came to America. I didn't know, like my mom was just finishing up college, didn't get to finish college, she came here. Um, I didn't know that my dad didn't really want to get married, but he just got married. And then, I don't know why he had five kids, but he had five kids. Um, so here he, in, in, he ended up working in the Department of Defense in, um, at an FMC down in Santa Clara and he worked there for like 18 years um, after he they moved here from Georgia I was like two or three um, I grew up thinking I was white <laughs> I you know I grew up in a, my family was you know we were, lived decent you know we had anything we needed um, the only thing was my parents didn't talk to each other and they didn't sleep in the same room and they didn't, they were always fighting. And that was just because, you know, my dad's stuff. Um, but then September 11th happened and I just, I think that's when I woke up like thinking, I'm not American. I remember going to school and then people around me and students around me talking about how Muslims should be interned. These were people who I thought were my friends. I remember waiting for my mom on the street and these guys drive up and they spit on me. And I think I woke up, I was like, whoa, like, What's going on? My dad ended up losing his job. He was like, it, they put him on like security, whatever, and just just try to get him out. And because he worked with the Department of Defense, and it was just after September 11th, it was just that. I think my dad just became really isolated, alone, and I don't know. I didn't talk to him. I didn't. We didn't talk to him. He didn't talk to any of us. He was just there. My, we ended up. They ended up divorcing. We lost our house. We lived like five of us in a two bedroom apartment. My mom went to school when she was fifty five. She went to CET, and she got classes in child development, and she did really well. And she ended up working for a um, child care center. And then, um, but she worked with other immigrant women too, like from Mexico, the Philippines. And there was other Indian, but the they all had the were limited English speaking. They were all immigrants, and it was really bad what they were doing there. The people, the women, American women there were would wouldn't work. They would leave kids, forget kids in the room. They would forget kids in the bathroom, and they would blame it on the immigrant women. And my mom, in the five years she was there, saw eleven women who had worked so hard. You know, and these women, some of these women were single parents. These, some of these women had given up everything just to work and they were being fired and women were being forced to sign contracts. And eventually it was my mom's turn and she got laid off. 
And it just makes me so angry that these women work so hard. Um, but my mom's working, you know, we were able to help her find another job and I'm working and, you know, my siblings are going to school and working. We're, we all live in one big house. Like we're renting a house, but it's, you know, we all live together. My sister and her husband live downstairs with their two kids. We live upstairs, but that's how we make do, you know, like that's how we take care of each other. And people are like, oh, wow, like, you know, like you guys are all living together, isn't that? It was like, we can't imagine not living together because we only know how to take care of each other. And everyone worked really hard to make it where they are. And it just makes me really mad when people abuse pe other people because they're limited in English or they look different. Because my mom and all the women, like I can tell you that were not like the Mexican women, the Filipino women, the Indian women, my mom, they were the hardest working. They gave kids the love and care. When no matter if I was born here, people don't think I'm American. If I'm with my family, my mom wears a scarf, my sisters wear scarves, and people don't think they're educated or smart. You know, we're all hyphenated stories, you know? Everyone in every different sphere will take me at my womanness, my, you know, my Pakistaniness, my Americanness, my Muslimness, any different people will pull at different things. And at different times, I will feel like I need to defend one or be more powerful in the other because I feel like that that's being attacked. And so I feel like as not just myself, I think a lot, anyone who's like uh, in America who had, who is not, you know, like just straight you know, American for you, been here for generations, they live with that struggle. Because, like, when I just recently heard about Mayor Evan Lowe of Campbell, like, being harassed by a woman, not just about his, like, ethnic background, but being out, outwardly gay. Like, are you serious? Like, his, gener his family has been here for, like, five generations. And he's still not American because he has, what, slanted eyes and he looks Asian? Like, I... I think I finally come to understand my kids will look like me. My, no matter what, you know, they're going to go through stuff and I will always go through stuff. I just learned to know how to be what I need to be when I need to be and be okay with that.